Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. A brand new event mode is here. It is Steel Hunt, and the slogan is Unleash Your Inner Predator. If you've ever wanted to go one versus one with your opponents, then this might be the game mode for you. Reminiscent of a Quake style multiplayer experience, with maybe just a sprinkling of Call of Duty in there, as there are also kill streak artillery strikes that you can use to devastate your opponents. So without further ado, let's take a look to see what this dog-eat-dog -dog combat is all about. So there are a wide variety of tanks that you can play in this new game mode. You can choose an Object 268, an IS-7, you can choose the T-57 Heavy. This is very powerful in the game mode. The Leopard 1, and also the Assassin of a Tank, the Bat Chatillon. Now all of these tanks will come with 100% crew, but unfortunately they won't have any crew training assigned to them. But don't worry, all of your crew training will not be wasted, and at the end of the event, your Leopard 1D crew will be assigned to the standard Leopard 1. But you might ask, well, I don't have the Leopard 1, what's going to happen to them? Well, they will wait in a special place in your barracks, which doesn't take up a barracks slot as far as I'm aware, but don't quote me on this, I might be wrong until they are assigned to a tank for the first time. And so that means if you don't already have these tanks yet, but you might be getting them in the future, then why not train up your crew on these vehicles now? There's no drop-down box for the Steel Hunt game mode. It is as simple as pick the tank you want to play and click that battle button. So as you load in, this is going to be your only chance to see what your enemies are playing in. Take this moment to figure out, are they going to be in bat chats? Are they going to be in T-57 heavies? And remember, this is just for their first life. After you die in this game mode, you can respawn. And also remember, this is one versus one versus one times by 12. 12 players in a game, all trying to kill each other. Now, the way that you win is by scoring points. Now, you can see at the top of the screen that there are, there are 20 points to, to get. And also look at this little problem meme going in there by the developers. That's a good one, whoever put that in. <laughs> I do enjoy that a lot. So it's the first to 20. 12 players all trying to reach 20 points first. Well, how do you get 20 points, you might immediately ask. And you get one point for doing a thousand damage, I believe. That's what I've been able to find out so far. And you also get one point for making a kill. So for example, if you were to steal 20 kills only having done 20 damage in the entire game, which would be the minimum amount of damage that you could possibly do, you will win. Or alternatively, you could get no kills and do 20,000 damage. But trying to do 20,000 damage in 10 minutes is quite a tall order. Now, one of the most novel things about this game mode is the fact that look at these guys. They're both my enemies and they're shooting each other. The only time that this would usually happen in World of Tanks is if they've had some kind of a disagreement. This leopard's like, hey, Ivan, what have you done? You've bumped into me. And then I was like looking back at him. Oh, I'm going to get you, Jerry. Didn't quite work out. And it was just so bizarre for me that I can wait until the leopard kind of kills the IS-7 a little bit and then finish him off myself. The IS-7 puts a good shot into our back, takes off our ammo rack and our track. We put our ammo rack back in and we try and get away from him as we're reloading. Now we use this mouse to avoid the shots. And because we're using that mouse to avoid shots, I drive straight into the mound. But thankfully now, the IS-7 has turned his attention to his, well, enemy. I was going to say friend, but he's definitely not his friend. Is his enemy behind him. And that allows me to sneak into the repair depot. Now, this is a very important feature of the game. As we can see there, if you manage to get into one of those circles and you're in there for five seconds, your tank gains all of its health back. And if you're an autoloader, it also finishes reloading itself. And so in theory, with the bat chat, you could fire 10 rounds into your opponent in very quick succession. Look at this, I'm using my first artillery barrage. Oh yes, we take out one with the artillery barrage. Lovely. Okay, we're reloading, we've got to get out of there. So on this map, there are two repair depots. You can see there's one in the east and one in the west. And you can use both of them, I believe, every three minutes. Yes, it's a three-minute cooldown. And each of them is a, a separate entity. And so I can visit one, and then I can change and visit the other. Oh, gosh, the T-57 Heavy catches us as we're reloading. But thankfully, it takes that lumbering beast a long time to turn his tank around. Oh, he hits me once again. But we managed to avoid his line of sight. 
Now, I must apologize for the, the quality of the video in this. It's not quite as high as usual. I will fix that in the future. It's because this game mode can only be, I guess, recorded live. That's because there is no replay functionality. I will try and improve the quality for you guys next time. So if you want to record your epic games in this game mode, then you're going to have to record it as it happens. So as we can see, we've put a couple of rounds into the T-57 Heavy. I was counting his shots, and so now I know he's reloading. I put the final one into him, and then check this out. My 40-second reload in the bat chat is actually 5 seconds reload. I'm fully repaired again, and then this repair depot is on a 3-minute cooldown. How absolutely crazy is this game mode? One of the keys to victory for you is to control the repair depots. If you can do that, you don't die. And if you don't die, it's not so much that you don't give the enemy team points. It's more of a case of if you don't die, then you're in the combat for longer. And if you're in the combat for longer, you're gaining more points. Oh, the IS-7 is stolen by an enemy Leopard 1. I decide to reload here and we're down to half health. We've still got 45 seconds left before we can use that repair depot again. And a wild IS-7 appears. We narrowly avoid him. Got to get out of there. So you might be wondering, well, how do you score points in this game mode? It is the first player to reach 20 points. You get one point for one kill. One point for each 1,000 damage you do. So in theory, you could win this game by just doing 20,000 damage. Or you could win it by doing 20 damage and getting 20 kills. Now this is my ultimate weapon. This is the artillery strike. Oh yes, look, we hit both of them really hard there. And that allows us to put some pressure on the bat chat and finish him off with an ammo rack. What a hit. It is absolutely amazing to use those artillery strikes on the enemy team when they get into the repair depot. One thing I should mention is that I think about 10 seconds after a tank dies, or maybe slightly longer, it explodes. So don't think the, all the, the wreckage, the, the husks of the tanks, are going to just constantly litter the battlefield and stop you from going down certain alleyways. That's not the way that the game works. So this IS-7 is coming at me. I'm fully reloaded, and he seems to not want to fight me. I'm hoping that, what I'm doing right now is I'm hoping that somebody else will engage him and then that will allow me to escape. Remember the bat chat is only capable of doing 1950 damage on average if it penetrates all of its five shells. And so what I need is to find targets like this. One. Two. The easiest two points I think you could ever get and that's something the bat chat is absolutely fantastic for. So we are leading right now. You can see at the top of the screen, we have got 13 points and the next highest player has got seven points. So we're having an awesome round here in the bat chat. We haven't even died yet. So just to talk about these two super weapons, these two kill streak rewards that you can get. One is an artillery barrage. Or if you want to save up, instead of using the artillery barrage, you can call in the airstrike. The artillery barrage is okay against a very stationary target. So if you've just tracked someone and they're in the open, then an artillery barrage can be very good indeed. But I found it is better and more rewarding and more strategic to use the, I guess, the strafing run. The bombing run, if you want to call it that. So there's no need for me to repair my tank yet. I want to use my five shells before I then go into the repair depot. I want to focus the bat chats. We put one into him, avoid his shell. Shoot the IS-7 again. We've got two left. We've also got a strafing run now. Am I going to think about using the strafing run? Oh, we shoot into his spaced armor and now we sneak back. And we're repaired and fully loaded. How absolutely crazy is that? Really controlling the, the repair depots and outplaying your opponents like that is your best way to win the game. So this object 268, 268 catches out of position. We bounce a couple of shots. But here we go. Let's see if we can get the strafe. Oh, I'm just deciding that I want to use the artillery barrage this time. And he does a strafing run on us by the looks of it. But we hit him with our artillery barrage. Let's see how much that hurt him, guys. I'm reloading. I don't want to fight him right now. 
We've got 16 points. Oh my word, did we actually kill him or somebody else did? I didn't quite see who got the kill on that Object 268. Maybe it was our artillery barrage. Maybe he just stood there and took it. So we are absolutely dominating these repair depots. This T-57 Heavy is coming towards us. I actually don't want to use the repair depot right now because I just finished reloading. So I've gone out, I've put a couple of shots into him, and now he thinks he's got me. Two, one. I'm fully repaired and fully reloaded again. Let's go, T-57 Heavy. What a surprise for that guy. I bet you he was not expecting that. And we take him down. We've even got two more shots. Oh, no! The artillery strikes are hitting us. We've got such low health. Is there still a tank there? No, there's not. We've got 18 points, guys. Can we get through this round without dying? We only need two more points to have had a flawless performance of a round. Oh, no, this isn't looking good. I put in my artillery strike just as I die. Hopefully it hits. Okay, new tank. This is, this is, you guys probably wouldn't have been able to see this if I had made it all the way through this round. But you can select any of these tanks. If you die in this game mode, you are not out the game. You just respawn. How fantastic is that? So if somebody goes and kicks your butt, and you want to go and get your revenge on him, and you've always wanted to do that in the random queue, then look no further than the Steel Hunt Lone Wolf game mode for you to be able to do that. This game's actually getting quite a lot closer. The next player has got 15 points. And there's 45 seconds left on this game. I need to do 2,000 damage or pick up a kill. But it doesn't look like I'm going to do 2,000 damage by playing like that. As I drive into a statue of I don't know who. So I don't want to get hit by the IS-7, but I also want to avoid the Leopard. I want to try and get my frontal armor towards the enemy. Oh, I'm getting double teamed here. I put my ammo rack back in. We've got 20 seconds left. Here we go. It's strafing run time, boys. Let's see if we can hit our strafing run on the Leopard. We hit the IS-7. We track him in place. Nine seconds left. Oh, come on. Don't miss. One more. Five, four, three, two, one. And that gets us the 20 points that we needed to be able to secure the game. What a clutch ending to that one. And so as we can see, if you're able to win this event, you do get a big reward indeed. We got 46,000 credits and we also made 2,266 experience. If you want to see how well you performed in individual tanks, you can change the, the slider here. It's pretty obvious that I did most of my work this game in the bat chat, only finishing it off with the T-57 Heavy at the end. I got 1,511 base experience points for my 9 kills and 12,000 damage. We hit 43 out of our 45 and 35 of those penetrated. And if we look on the detailed report, we can see that we got 42,000 credits profit. But I hasten to add that you only get that kind of profit if you win the event. If you finish second, it counts as a defeat and you get a significant amount less. So I guess that's good for players like me and maybe a bit bad for players who don't seem to finish first probably two thirds of the time. So I think there are still improvements that Wargaming can make towards the economy of this game mode to encourage us to play it. And so your reward if you're successful in this game mode are a few commemorative tokens, I guess, that you will find down at the bottom. There is Steel Hunter, which is just awarded to you for completing any of the games in the game mode. And more interestingly, there is also Lone Wolf. This one is awarded to you if you win a battle of Steel Hunt as a solo player. And so you might have to give it a few tries to be able to pick up that one. There are a few things that I think that Wargaming should add into this game mode to make it even better. For example, how cool would it be if there was a consumable that maybe allowed you to see where the leader was on the battlefield? It would be kind of like a, a Mario Kart functionality to penalize the leader and then maybe allow other players to catch back up with him. Maybe it could be like a, a three-point consumable that reveals only the leader's position on the map, maybe to everyone globally. How fantastic would that be? Also, I think currently the meta of autoloaders is a little overpowered, especially considering they can fully reload their tank in only five seconds if they dominate one of the repair depots. I also like the, the point system. While there is an incentive to get that killing blow, which adds that excitement into the game, it's not the be-all, end-all. It's not the first 
person to get 20 kills. If that was the case, everybody would just be kill stealing. The way it is, if you dish out 2,000 points worth of damage in your bat chat, that's two points. That's twice as good as waiting to try and finish off that single target. My main suggestion, however, is that Wargaming change these domination tanks to being reward tanks in their functionality, i.e. they don't make bonus credits, they're not premium, but they are premium in the way that we can put our crews in them without penalty. I think if we were able to put our crews into these tanks without having to retrain them, which is very expensive, we would play this game mode more, and that's really what Wargaming want. They want us to have a fantastic game mode that we will enjoy, and I certainly would enjoy it a lot more if I didn't have to spend 800 gold moving my crew into a bat chat just so I can continue crew training, and then when I want to play the bat chat with my tier 10 tank companies, or even just in the random queue by myself, I can't without retraining it back again. How ludicrous is that? And it would be such an easy fix for Wargaming to make. And finally, the economics, while they are improved compared to the last Domination game mode, they're only really improved for the winner. If you're not using a premium account and you don't win this game mode, you are not going to be making 40,000 profit every 7 to 10 minutes like I was. And so hopefully Wargaming can tune it up a little bit to be fairer for all. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like down below and let me know in the comments what you think about this Steel Hunt Lone Wolf game mode. Is it what you've been waiting for? Have you always wanted to get those one versus one versus one engagements? Or maybe you think it's silly, not in the spirit of World of Tanks, and maybe you have no interest in it. Either way, I'm really looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say in the comments down below. And I wish you all the best of luck on the battlefield. Thanks for watching, you've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.